Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel, God bless. Thank you for joining in guys. Hope everyone is doing okay. Can you hear my voice? Please let me know if you can hear me. Give me one in the live chat if you can hear me. Is my sound loud and clear? All right, all right, thank you, thank you. God bless everyone. Welcome, guys. It's showtime! You know, David Wood has his own uh, couple of words, you know, TikTok. So from now on, I will use it's showtime. What do you think, guys? <laughs> ah, just, we'll see, we'll see. I hope everyone is doing okay, guys. God bless you. God bless your families. I want to also ask God to bless the Muslims and open their eyes today so they will drop Islam, denounce Muhammad as a fake prophet and come back home and join us in Jesus Christ. Glory to his name, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, can I say it's showtime. <laughs> Guys, today we will talk about the hypocrisy of Islam and Muslims and we will also go and show you the hypocrisy in the teaching of Muhammad, the hypocrite false prophet of Islam. And we will also, <clears throat> when I finish my teaching, we will have also a nice Q&A session like always with our guests in the live chat about Islam or the mentioned topic of today. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can, guys. And if there are some Muslims who have, think who have the knowledge and the courage to call in to refute me, please call me when I'm done teaching. Maybe then we will have a nice and respectful discussion. If there are no Muslims today who have the courage and the knowledge to call me, maybe uh, we will see if we will allow uh, also Christians for a change. Right? I don't want to be a racist towards my uh, fellow brothers in Christ. So last time our sister uh, Renee called in, I asked her to call me and we had a nice small uh, talk, right? So we'll see. We'll see what happened today, guys. We'll see where the wind will blow us in what kind of direction today. Before we start, guys, I want you to uh, to <clears throat> pray with me in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And also, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button guys please also click on the notification bell so you will get notifications when i go live or upload videos so please pray with me in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ dear lord please give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement deception and doubt please lord help us honor you in all our ways Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Lord, the devil is scheming and I know he desires to keep us from spending time with you. Lord, thank you for your grace because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved son, Jesus Christ. We are saved. Please, Lord, guide us so we can learn to forgive others who might curse us or others who might persecute us persecute us because we are followers of your holy son Jesus Christ Lord please give me the strength when I'm weak and in need of your comfort please give me the courage and wisdom today to overcome lies and deceptions help me not to lean on my own understanding but in everything acknowledge you Lord so that you can direct my words thoughts and action in Jesus name we pray Amen. Like I said, guys, thank you for joining in. God bless you. Let us start today's teaching. As we know, Muslims always love to call us all kind of names. They uh, love to say, you Christians, you are nothing but mushrikun. You are associating partners with Allah and whatnot. And 
they say you are nothing but pagans. They call our pagans, right? But they forgot that they themselves are nothing but hypocrites. And today we're going to prove that in our teaching. And I think this is a good topic to show the Muslims that you should not point fingers. Before pointing fingers at others or calling others all kind of names, look inside the mirror and take those needles out of your own eyes first. Right? Guys, if we go to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, in <clears throat> chapter 1 of the Quran, was nothing but a chapter that was added to the Quran. So the Muslims, when they added this chapter to the Quran, they corrupted the Quran. Because this chapter was never part of the Quran in the first place. So I don't want to go too much into the off topic of the corruption of the Quran. But we're going to show you that Muslims, when they pray, they don't pray like us. When they pray, they curse Jews and Christians. And the ayah is in front of you. Chapter 1, ayah 7. The path of those whom thou has favored. Those are the Muslims, right? This part, the first part is the Muslims. And not the path of those who earn thine anger. Those are the Jews, nor of those who go astray. Those are the Christians. So when Muslims, they pray, they repeat the curses of Allah. Right? They repeat the curses of Allah. If there are many Muslim who does not agree with me about this ayah, I'll go, I'm going to show you. If you don't agree with, with me here and you call me a liar and a scumbag, that means you're calling your own prophet a liar and a scumbag. Watch. This is from Sunnah.com. Sunnah.com. Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih al-Bukhari. Sahih, 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 Sahih. Right, always with the echo so they can hear. Sahih, 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 Sahih al Bukhari. Sahih, 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 Sahih. Volume 6, Book 60, Hadith number 82. And in the Arabic references, Book 65, Hadith number 4559. Right? 4559. Look what Muhammad is doing in the morning, guys. Narrated Salim's father. Narrated Salim's father. That he heard Allah's messenger on raising his head from the bowing in the last rakah in the Fajr prayer. Now the Fajr prayer is the morning, right? In the morning, uh, when Muslims pray, they call the Fajr praying. Saying, look what Muhammad is saying, guys. O oh Allah, curse such and such person and such and such person and such and such person. So, you know, Muhammad always needed to do everything three times. You see? You see how Muhammad... Love to curse people in his prayers. He's invoking Allah to curse people in his prayer. And they call that praying people. So when Muslims pray, they repeat the curses of Allah. And Muhammad himself, the prophet of Islam, when he prayed, he cursed people. Lanat Allah ala hadha and hadha, right? Lana means cursing. He's cursing people, asking Allah to curse people in his prayers. But what do Christians say? Please God forgive the ones who might hurt us or curse us or persecute us. You see how beautiful the teaching of Christ is? Christ said, if people curse you, you'll be blessed, right? But in Islam, you're allowed to curse such and such. Even the Imams of today, go on YouTube. There are tons of videos. Tons of videos where you'll see Imams while praying, cursing Shia, cursing Jews and whatnot. Shia cursing Aisha. Right? Not only the Sunnis do that. Even the Shia. They love to curse Aisha, Abu Bakr, Omar. Right? Ab <laughs> Basically, uh, almost the whole Sahaba, right? And the Sunnis, they curse the Shia. This is nothing but a religion of cursing. Sex, sex religion and cursing religion, hate religion, right? And they call it religion. 
Not of mercy. So, I had a small argument with this guy called Ali Mirza. Guys, do you know Ali Mirza? Have you heard of Ali Mirza? Basically, there are two Ali Mirzas. There's one guy who is a little, little bit slow. And there's another guy who keeps uh, calling CP. I think they are two. They are not the same people. They both come to call themselves Ali Mirza. But I had a debate with Ali Mirza. And I want to play it for you. It's not really a big debate. But you'll see uh, his hypocrisy. I'm going to spank him. I spanked him actually during that debate, but I want to play it for you and then from that on I will continue my teaching, okay? So let me play the video for you guys and then I will continue showing his hypocrisy once more. Let me play the video. So let's see what kind of debate it will be. Let me start the Skype call and so watch this debate guys and hopefully you can enjoy how he's going to spank me. <laughs> Good luck, man. Good luck. Hello. Hello. How are you, bro? You okay? Yeah, I'm good. Are you that uh, Ali Mirza guy? Yes, I'm the Ali Mirza guy, yes. Okay, okay. And why you call yourself Mr. Bond here? Why, we got a problem with that? No, but why don't you use your real name? Why? Come straight to the point. Leave that question. Just come straight to the point. Why are you using a false name? Are you, something that you got a point with that? You got a point? Well, yeah. why are you? Why are you? Are you, are you? Are you? Are you trying to be a coward or what? So are you trying to be a knob? Are you? Are, did you? Did you call me to mock me or you want to debate? What's... Are you trying to be a knob? Are you trying to be a dickhead? What are you trying to be? Uh, well, your prophet was all of that, so don't call me that, okay? If you want to debate, be respectful, prophet, else I will ban you. Prophet, no way. Don't bring the prophet in the way, okay? Okay. So, do, not, so, so respect yourself, respect but, yourself, but this, this, and let us debate, you. else I will kick you and ban you. It's what about that? Little immigration from some somewhere in Arab country, right? You call yeah. this other Arab country, right? Come to the point. Do I, you want to debate? Abdul, your prophet is an Arab. No, you retard. Between me and what a certified uh, donkey. His prophet is an uh, Arab and he's attacking the debate. Arabs. Let oh, us debate. Let us debate. This is, this is I have a question. This. I have a question. You you okay. you challenge me for the debate. I'm here. I answered your call, right? Okay, I have a question. I have a question. Does Allah enter his creation? Yes or no? Yes, he does. Allah is a creator. Does he I know he's creator? Listen carefully to my question. Does Allah enter his creation? Yes or no? Yes, he does. How? He says in the Quran, in the Holy Quran. How? Can you show me? Because Muslims Muslims say Allah does not enter his creation. Muslim, Muslim, Muslim. Okay? You study the Quran, so you should know. You study the Quran, haven't you? You must no wait. You Muslims say you Muslims say Allah does not enter his creation. So you're not a Muslim. You're not, a, you're not a Sunni Muslim, are you? I am a Sunni Muslim. I'm, I'm still studying my Quran, but I don't know, I'm not a professor or a scholar or anything. Okay. I'm so, a bit honest with you. That. I'm so, a bit, I'm so, so you camp. don't know much uh, about Islam? Is that what you're saying? I'm not Quran Hafiz. I'm not Quran Hafiz. I'm telling you, I will not be some bobs about uh, the basic part of Islam. But I want, like, I'm not too high level in the scholar. Okay. Like you, you, okay, you, 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 okay, 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 answer the question, you, answer the question. Wait, does Allah, mean? does Allah enter his creation? Yes or, yes or no? Allah does enter his creation. Okay, yes, how? Creation. Okay, how? You're asking two hard questions that I won't even able to answer. So, you think you can debate me, you can't answer one question? Listen. I'm on the phone, right? I'm only here to speak. Two hard questions, Why guys. We are English asking two hard questions. Speak English. So you you called That's me you called me to to say yeah. why I'm why I'm destroying Muslims <laughs> during debates. Why, why, what why kind of? Debate? Why don't you debate people who are proper scholars? That's why you called me to ask me this yes, question. That's why I called you. Go and debate proper scholars. Because Go you're okay. Let me answer. Your scholars are hiding. They are hiding from me, they are hiding from Christian Prince, no, no, no. they are no, hiding no, no. from David no, Wood, they, no, no, no. they are hiding from Sam Shimon. No, no, no. They are scared to debate They're us. They are hiding from you. You are hiding from them. How? Did I, didn't I pick up the phone? Listen, listen, didn't I pick up the phone? 
How am I hiding? How am I hiding? You are hiding on you sitting on your laptop. I'm hiding. You want to debate me? Listen, your scholars. Listen, your your imam, your imam. Does he want to debate me? Does he want to date me, or does he want to debate me? You are saying on YouTube, "I'll burn your crown." How would you feel? And that is very bad, my friend. I, what the, what did I say? Wait, what did, what did I say? What did I say? You say on YouTube, yeah, on videos. How would you feel if I burn your Quran? No, that's not what I said. No, no, no. That's what you said. No, you, I said, I said, if we burn Quran on the street of London, how many Christians? That was a question to a Muslim. You cannot focus. That's not my problem. You didn't read no, no, no. or listen to the video. I said, if I burn one Quran on the street of London. How many die. Christians will die? How many Christians will die in Pakistan? So you didn't watch the video. Go watch the video. Don't come back, okay? So don't put words in my mouth. Shame on you. You are an immigration to London yourself. Why are you calling Pakistan immigration? That's not what I said. Again, no, listen, I'm listen, 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 Abdul, Abdul. Again, let me repeat. Let me repeat. Focus. Stop. Listen. Put down. Put down the shisha. Stop yeah. smoking hashish. I said. During the video, during the video, during the video, during the last video, my debate, with, listen, 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 listen. I said to that guy, to that Muslim guy in my debate, Yusuf Ali, I was debating Yusuf Ali, I asked him, if I burn a Quran on the street of London, how many people who are Christians will die on the streets of Pakistan? He said many. He even confirmed that. He said, yes, it's true. If you burn one Quran on the street of London, Christians are causing trouble against them. At least 10 Christians will die on the streets of Pakistan. Do you, can you deny that? No. It happened. It happened, right? They burned churches for that. Yes, that's common fact. That's natural. We are Allah believers. We are soldiers of Allah. If you touch our Quran. Okay, if you're a soldier, answer the question. The way you are Jesus of soldiers, we are Jesus of Allah. Simple. Okay, but we uh, but we don't burn people alive or uh, crucify people or stone people to death if you mock Jesus. That's, so don't 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 give me that shit. Don't don't use bad language or I'll block you. Okay. same way. Respect yourself. Respect yourself. Respect yourself. Abdul, 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 Abdul. Easy, easy, easy. 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 Don't cry. Don't cry. Easy, easy, easy. Okay. Listen. Again, let me again answer the. Uh, sorry, ask you the question. Does Allah enter His creation? Yes, I know, and why? That question, that Allah enter, look, this is not about Allah Ta'ala, right? No, no, no. About, no, you called me, to... you called me, you called me because you said I'm a coward. I picked up the phone, I'm not a coward, I'm talking to you. Answer the question. Listen, answer the question. Paid with the proper scholar. Okay, bring me, bring me, bring me a scholar. Bring me a scholar, bring me a scholar, bring me a scholar. Bring me a scholar who can answer this question. Bring me a scholar. Ali, they will call Muhammad the Jab. They will call, you know. Okay, bring them. Have, okay, bring they, them. They bring them. They don't have, no, they don't have people with time dictated uh, time with uh, like you. You're a waste of time. You're, You're a waste of time. You, 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 know called me, you, know you called me. You called me for nothing. Bye, my bye. Get me you a scholar. You have my Skype ID. Get me a scholar and call me. Beat the shit out of you. Okay, okay. I find you. Beat the shit out. You can do nothing. We are spanking you and we're spanking your prophet day and night. You can't do anything. You you only have bad words, like your prophet who said, "Go bite on the penis of your forefathers if you're proud about a jahiliya." So just go, 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 go. This is how abusive your fucking words are. Coward. He called me, as you saw, guys, he called me to use bad language. He didn't call me to debate. Muslim. He can't even answer one question. I asked him a simple question. Does Allah... Don't call me, coward. Don't call me. I'm not picking a, a phone to waste my time with you. Bring me your sheikh next time and try to call me, okay? So, I hope next time he will call me with a sheikh. Because this is a waste of time. He called me to mock me. That's it. okay. Let's see. Let's see what he has to say. Let me give him one chance. Let me pick up the phone. What do you want, Abdul? No, listen. Uh, let's have, let's have a part for conversation now. Okay. Okay. okay answer right. the question. Does Allah enter what? His creation? Yes. Okay. How? How? Yeah, how? What do you mean how? Can you uh, show me the ayah? Can you show me the ayah from the Quran and the Hadith? Well, the earth and the heavens, it says in the Quran already, 
like you know, you've seen it, but you guys don't believe it. If I haven't showed okay, you... Okay, show me the ayah. Ayah. show me the ayah where it says that Allah enters creation. Yeah, I will show you the ayah. It's okay, in, show uh, me. It's in Kursi as well. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim allahu la ilaha il-Qayyim la ta'awuzu sinatuhu al-Nom lahum Yeah, blah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Can you give me the ayah number and chapter number, please? Yeah, I'll give the ayah number and chapter number okay, if okay. you want. Okay. 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 Which chapter? What is the chapter number? I'm waiting, man. Yeah, one second, bro. I'm not by the keyboard warrior. Uh, last time I checked, you Muslims always say you memorize the Quran by heart. What what happened? I thought it was the translation of the Roman language, okay? So. Allah, there is no God, but He is the living, the suffering, missing the eternal. No Give me the chapter number and ayah number. And why did you change your name to Akram now this time? Sorry? A couple seconds ago, you were Mr. Uh, Bond. Now you are Mr. Air Akram. Why, now, now, why, why, are you so, why are you so bothered about the name? Just the name, man. You keep, you keep my name. I keep yeah, I name. wonder why. I, why are you changing in your name every second? Are you afraid? Are you a dickhead? To tell me, are you a dickhead? Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 a, I'm a dig head like your prophet, okay? Shut up then, if you want to debate. Okay, give me the ayah, give me the ayah, give me the ayah. Give me the ayah, Abdul, give me the ayah, give me the ayah. What's your fucking problem? I gave you a chance, give me the ayah now. Give me the ayah to back up what you say. Because you're the only Sunni Muslim I know who says Allah enters creation. Yeah, you, you went to some You're the only, listen, you're the only Sunni guy who says that Allah enters creation. Yeah, they don't even know bastards properly. You go to them people to debate with yeah, okay, show me. I'm waiting. Okay, I'm, yeah, there you go. Okay, Abdul, show me. <laughs> Stop calling me names, by the way. If you call me in one time again a name, I will ban you. Be respectful. I'm, I don't use bad language. Don't use bad language with me, okay? Respect yourself. Don't, don't act like you're prophet. What's the chapter number? That's a screenshot of the sky, okay? Have a look at yourself. No, 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 you give me the chapter number. The living, the self is obtainable. What is the chapter number, number and ayah number? He, Abdul, old. don't waste my time. Don't waste my time. Give me the chapter number and ayah number. Bro, this is the verse of the Quran. Okay, give it to me. Give it to me. I'm waiting. Fine. This is a recite of the Quran. Okay, give me the chapter number, Ayn. Don't waste my time. Okay, I'm doing chapter number. Yeah, I will give you the chapter number. Hold on. Okay. Good. Finally. I'm still waiting, man. Come on. Chapter 2, what? Chapter 2 and then chapter I... Two. Yeah? Chapter 2, 255. 255, okay. Yes. Let's see. Chapter 2, Ayah 255, right? Yeah, 255? 255, yes, brother. I'm okay, not... okay, let me read it. Allah, there is no deity except Him, the ever living, the sustainer of all existence. Yes. Neither drowness overtakes him nor sleep. To him belongs whatever is in the heaven and whatever is on the earth. Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. A day encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. His courtesy extends over the heavens and the earth and there Per preservation tires him not, and he's the most high, the most great. Okay, where does it say he enters creation? Continue it, read the full chapter, don't just read the one chapter. You give me the ayah, this is the ayah, where does it say Allah enters creation? Where? You know that you are the only Sunni Muslim who believes this, right? What? According to all the Muslims, Allah does not enter his creation. So you're not a Muslim, my friend, when you think that. I am a Muslim, my friend. Astaghfirullah. Okay. What are you talking about? Because you what? say Allah enters creation. You can't judge with the one. You're trying to say Sunni Muslims are not Muslims. 
No, That's you, you. I'm not talking about all the Sunni Muslims. I'm talking I about you. Uh, brother, I gave you the fucking full push. Why yeah, full push this is one? chapter, this is chapter... Two, two, two five, five. This Yeah, is where does it say Allah enters creation? Where does it say that? It means I to Christ Allah's chair. Yeah, okay. Where does it say he's and he enters his creation? That's everything that says all in everything, one verse. Okay, it doesn't say that. Where? Yes. Show me where. In the Ayatul Kursi, that explains it all, brother. His Kursi extends over the heavens and the earth. Where does it say he enters the earth? He uh, enters the earth. That's in the Hadith. It says. He so, the, so, uh, so, 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 according to your according to your knowledge of Islam, of the you're the only Muslim who says that Allah does not enter his creation. Which Muslim? Which Muslim says that? All the Muslims say that. Except all you. All the Muslims. Which yeah. All the Muslims. Can, can you? Bring can you call can you call your imam do you have the number of your imam please can you call him and say and ask him does allah enter his creation i don't need to go to no imams i don't believe Why? in imams oh you because don't believe I'm a Muslim, who told you who told you who told you islam I learned the quran myself. I who taught you islam no learn the quran i quran learned mashallah alhamdulillah learned the quran myself. okay I do you do you accept hadith or what do you accept we do accept hadith, yes. We do accept hadith. Okay, uh, we, great, uh, we great, got great. four or five, we got millions of hadith, bro. There's millions of them in the world, you know, not, not just one, not just two. The Shia Bukhari, Shia Muslim, there's a, a, a book of uh, Ibrahim, the book of Daud, David. There's, you know, there's so many of them. We, we Sunni Muslim, we book of, uh, uh, I was having a word with my conversation with my friend. I know what I tell you what, yeah. Okay. My good friend, right? He's a good, uh, most, he's, he's got more knowledge than me. You okay. Know, listen, listen, know, listen, listen, listen. Listen. I'm. Do you know IslamQNA.info? Do you know the website? Islam of what? Okay. Let me read from you. Okay. The Quran describes the exaltedness or highness of Allah in different ways as his being high and above and by describing how things come down from him and go up to him and by stating that he's above heaven and it also says that he's okay. above Al-Arsh, right? Above his throne. Yes. So he does not, according to Islam, he does not enter his creation. Why are you lying about your Allah? Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's what. Oh, you saying he doesn't enter his creation? Yes. Yes. Not, oh. Okay. Yes. So, so, uh, so, so not, not enter his creation because he does not interact with his creation. So, so can can you apologize for lying? The first yes, time? I, I misunderstood. Uh, I misunderstood your concept. Sorry about how, that. How 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 did you misunderstood? How many times did I ask you? Maybe ten times. Uh, many. I was like already. Asking okay. That time. Okay. So oh, so so you say so you agree that Allah does not enter His creation, right? No, it doesn't. Okay. It, uh, God is unseen. Okay. Okay. God is. Very Can you hundred percent tell me that Allah does not enter His creation? Can you confirm it, please? Uh, I can't confirm that. I don't Why? Know, but it, you just said Allah does not enter his creation. Yeah, not, bro, every Muslim says that uh, Allah does not creation. Okay, to so Allah, you agree. So you agree, right? You agree. I agree. Yes. Okay. I agree. Okay. Up, end of story. Okay. Great. 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 What about what about Sah Okay. What about Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih Muslim? It says that Allah mm -hmm. descends every night. He descends to the lowest heaven. What will you do with that? What do you mean by descent? Descent. He, he comes down. He comes down to the lowest heaven, which is creation. So here we have a contradiction. What are you okay. going to do with that? This is in Sahih al Bukhari, Hadith number one one four five one one four five, yeah. and Muslim Sahih Muslim one two six one. And yeah. let me read for you from Abu okay. Huraira. May Allah be pleased with him that the Prophet said, "The Lord descends every night to the lowest heaven." One one mm -hmm. third of the night remains and says, who will call upon me? So Allah does enter his creation because the lowest heaven is a creation of Allah. So yeah, we no, have, so we have here, wrong, so we have a contradiction here. So we have a contradiction here. No, 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 you got the wrong meaning. No, no, no. What he's trying to say the hadith is, he comes down to the 
third sky, you not know, between the sky. No, no, to the, the lowest, sky. lowest. Yes, yeah, yeah, the no, first he, heaven. To, to listen to our prayer. To the first like heaven. The... So he no, no, he no, does no. enter. He does and enter. He does... No, 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 no. You okay, explain. Okay, okay, explain. Explain. Okay. Okay, explain. Explain the hadith for me. Okay, uh, I don't know much about it, but I'm hundred percent sure you are misunderstanding that hadith. Can you give me the book one book number and the uh, reference number, please? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Sahih al Bukhari, Sahih al Bukhari, yeah. hadith number one one four five one one four five, and Sahih Muslim also reports it in hadith number one two six one. Okay. One one four five. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he, you do, he, he, so a, you don't know about this. So so first, let me summarize what we said. First, you he, you said actually, Allah enters creation. Then after ten times, I asked it. Wait, 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 wait. After ten times, listen, listen. After ten times, after ten times, I asked you the same question. You said yes, Allah enters creation. Then I told you that Allah does not enter creation. You confirmed that you said, I misunderstood you after 10 times. Allah does not enter creation. Now I'm showing you from both Sahih al-Bukhari and Sahih muslim that Allah, according to your prophet, not according to me, according to your prophet, Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven. So Allah enters his creation. So here we have a contradiction. You said, I don't know. Okay, I respect that. Go ask, go ask your Shaykh, go ask your Imam, go ask your friends. Come back and we can discuss about this, okay? Okay, no problem. Okay. 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 Uh, Have a nice day. Have a nice day. You, you, in, be honest, where you do a little research about this on YouTube. Uh, you know, sometimes. Yeah, okay, 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 okay. Go, time. listen, listen, listen. Go, 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 go. Just go. Listen, just go do research. Come back, okay? See yeah. you next time. Okay, okay bye, okay, bye. Brother. bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Guys, what do you think about what happened? <laughs> you heard it right, guys. First he said, Allah does enter his creation. Then he said, after I corrected him, he said, no, no, Allah does not enter his creation. Then we showed him <laughs> Sahih Bukhari <laughs> and Sahih Muslim, Allah does enter his creation. So Muslims, you want to have a cake and eat it too? <laughs> This is a nice comedy show by Muslims in Islam. Uh, lion, Lion of Islam, you kitten of Islam, kitten of Islam. You just said in the text and everyone was listening and, and reading what you write. Allah does not enter creation. We just showed you and the hadith is in front of you. The Lord descends every night to the lowest heaven. See that? And the heaven, heaven guys, the Islamic brothel called Jannah, that they call heaven, is a creation of Allah. But Allah descends every night to the lowest heaven. So here, the proof is in front of you. Allah does enter his creation. So why do you Muslims say there is nothing like Allah? La mithli shay. Right? Ultimate truth. You are a deceiver. Your imams are deceivers who are spanking your own prophet. You spank your own prophet when you say, when you say Allah does not enter creation. The proof is in front of you. Is heaven creation of Allah? You say yes. And here Allah enters his creation, which is heaven, every night. Is Muhammad a liar when he said it in Al-Bukhari? The hadith number is in front of you. He said it also in Sahih Muslim, hadith number 1261. And Sahih, Sahih, Bukhar, Sahih, Sahih, 11.45. Or did Allah deceive people? Did Allah, was Allah deceiving the Muslims in Jannah? When he said uh, he will enter the lowest heaven, which is the heaven number one. There are seven heavens, right, in Islam. And Allah descends not the seventh one, not the sixth one, not the fourth one, not the second one. No, the lowest one, which is heaven number one. You see? The proof is in front of you. So why you hypocrite munafiq Muslims? Shame on you lying to us saying that Allah does not enter his creation. Liars, filthy, hypocrite munafiqun. Shame on you. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Bukhari. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Muslim. Little bit echo guys, you know, so they, they, they will catch it. Mr. Ultimate Truth, didn't I tell you last time when you called me, didn't I tell you to change your name? Your name is Shirk, man. And now you are calling me deceiver?
Who is, who is this deceiver? Your imams are deceivers. Shame on you for lying to us and saying that Allah does not enter his creation. Muslims for the last 1400 years said, Allah does not enter his creation. Well, the proof is in front of you. Muhammad is exposing you. Muhammad is spanking you. Mr. Kitten of Allah, you have been spanked. Mr. Ali Mirza, you have been spanked. And Mr. Ultimate Shirk, you have been spanked. Guys, let us continue. You know, I wanted to show you today's teaching, right? And I wanted to start with this nice small debate. Let us continue, guys. So this same Ali Mirza, guys, this same Ali Mirza, yeah, the same guy, he called me, right? The same guy, and now he's in the text saying, go and get up you lazy butt, go and debate with real, with real debaters. After I spanked him, he's saying, go debate with real debaters. Are you feeling scared to come on stage? That why I will res respect you? At least David went on stage, de debated, but he gets spanked real hard. Did you catch it? He's saying, he's saying that David would, in that debate with Muhammad Hijab, David Wood got spanked hard. And I said to him, Ali Mirza, David Wood got spanked? Abdul, what did you smoke? Hashish? Did you not see how Mimi Hijab said, Allah prays for Muhammad? You know, and I put it here, real debate. Ha ha ha. You should know that CP and I, we taught people like David Wood about Islam. Guys, we are doing this for a long time, right? When we started debating Muslims, when we started to teach about Islam, there was no internet like today. There were no sources that you could find online. We had to go to the Arabic always, right? To teach about Islam. Boy, you're truly an ignorant Abdul. You have no idea who you're talking to. We are CP and RC. Just go, kid. Tell your mom or dad to call me on my next live show, which is today, right? Which is today. So Ali Mirza is responding. Mate, everyone knows he got spanked. So he's again saying that David Wood got spanked. Just give up and come on stage in reality. Stop hiding behind screen. I'm not hiding. I'm here. Call me. <laughs> I'm not hiding, Abdul. You want to debate me or you want to date me, Abdul? You look, out, how, look at the filthy excuses. They will never ever, guys, a true imam will never ever call a guy like me, right? So, what did he say more? Let's see. He says then, first mate, I don't smoke hashish or shisha. I'm a non-smoker. You just talking about normal Arabs who are atheists. Normal Arabs? <laughs> what are normal Arabs? I mean, Muhammad was an Arab. Muhammad, your fake prophet was an Arab. Are you now attacking Arabs? And he says, I don't smoke uh, hashish or shisha. And I responded to him. I said, hey, Ali Mirza Abdul, your fake prophet and the Sahaba were Arabs. So he's attacking the Arabs while his prophet and the Sahaba were Arabs. What a hypocrite munafiq. Shame on you for attacking the Arab prophet. Smoked and drank alcohol. Muhammad and his homeboys, they drink wine, which is Nabid in Arabic, more than you and me. Ultimate truth, call, no, don't call me now. Don't call me now. Call me after I'm done. Call me after I'm done. So, they drink wine more than you and me, right? So I told him, take beer. Take, take beer. Take beer. Cheers. Right? And he says, your alcohol drink and doing things all the time. You are a nedges and dirty swine. Now he's calling me dirty swine. And I said to him, Ali Mirza, you're calling your prophet and sahab a dirty swine now? They used to drink alcohol, Nabid, for three days and three nights. Check your hadith, Abdul. Take beer. Again, stop cursing the Prophet, Abdul. Shame on you. Go wash your mouth. So as you see, guys, so as you see, the guy said that this Abdul, this Mimi Hijab, he spanked David Wood. Let's see if this Mimi Hijab, what he said in the debate, this is the debate between David Wood and Mimi Hijab. Let's see what David Wood and Mimi Hijab said during the debate. Who is spanking who? Guys, listen carefully. This is what Mimi Hijab was saying during the debate. Emmanuel, etc. God is with us. Elijah is also... The word Elijah in the, in the Hebrew language means God is with us. So if... if 
Did you uh, catch it? He said, <laughs> Elijah means God with us, like Emmanuel. <laughs> That's a lie, my friend. Liar, scumbag. Really, Muslims? Do you believe in this filthy liar? <laughs> Elijah means God with us. Oh, liar. man. If we go to Prophet Google, peace be upon him, we can read the following. Elijah is an Hebrew name and it means, according to Prophet Google, Elijah is a Hebrew name, meaning my God is Yahweh or Jehovah. That's what it means. It doesn't mean God with us, Mr. Liar, scumbag. Do you have any shame in you? No. You Clearly. see how he lied, guys? You see how he lied? Emmanuel means God with us. Elijah means God is Yahweh. Thank you for lying again. I said some career-ending embarrassing statements today. I mean, to be honest with you. Yeah. <laughs> career-ending for you, bro. Nice one. Look how his crowd is applauding for him. <laughs> they have no clue what he's saying, really. They have no clue because if you watch my last video, you saw that this guy has no clue about the Arabic. He was quoting an English translation of an Arabic hadith which said that the Quran will be walking like a pale man, right? He will come like a pale man, the Quran. This guy doesn't know Arabic and <laughs> he clearly doesn't know Hebrew. Guys, watch what he's going to say about the Bible so we can laugh. Okay, so you heard it guys. He said Elijah means God with us. Filthy scumbag liar. And look what he's saying here, guys. What did I say? The Quran claims. Surely Allah and his angels pray for the prophet. Mr. Hijab was ready for this, so he proceeded to smash my mistranslation. He says, Allah says, uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi. And he's here saying that he prays to the prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and you saw Liala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going clap, to happen. Clap, clap, guys. Clap, clap, clap. Look how, they, how, look how he's going to get, to get spanked. I guys. knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. You want to give free Arabic it. lessons and while you don't why know Arabic? Put four, this guy doesn't even know Arabic. To the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hear, speak salah. This, come on, please. Don't embarrass yourself. According to Mr. Hijab, what did I say? And he's here saying that he prays to the prophet. What did I actually say multiple times? Surely Allah and his angels pray for, for the prophet. For Allah the prophet. And his angels pray for the prophet. What's the correct translation? And that's why the translators put for, not to the prophet. <laughs> Muhammad Hijab. What an embarrassing career ending. Statement. Oh man, Allah prays guys. Allah in the meantime Mr. still Muhammad praying. Hijab, I advise you to never ever again debate in your life. Your career <laughs> has ended my friend. Don't debate with people like David Wood. Don't ever debate on Speaker's Corner in London because your career is over. To make it even more worse guys, this guy even lied about the Arabic. Because now watch guys, say watch what the real meaning four, is. Four, according to the Arabic, because the Quran says the following: Inna Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalluna ala al Nabi. Again, ala al Nabi. That means on the Prophet, not four and not two. So it's not if both. <laughs> Muhammad Hijab claims to be an expert as an Arab speaker. He clearly embarrassed himself more than that it's not for it's not to it's on the prophet i don't uh, blame david wood for not knowing arabic but this mr hijab guy he's an egyptian he should not have used taqiyya and a, basically he's agreeing with david wood on the for the prophet part it's not to it's not for it's on the prophet did you catch it guys? So basically guys, like I said, I don't blame David Wood. I love David Wood guys. I love him. May God 
protect him and his family. May God bless him for his work. I don't blame the guy. He's not an Arabic speaker like me. He's not an Arabic speaker like Christian Prince. Right? I don't blame him if he is not knowing about the real translation. He heard it. Everybody heard it. Four. He said four. What did Muhammad Hijab said, who claims to be an Arabic expert? Muhammad Hijab said four. Right? But it doesn't mean four. It means on. Ala means on. Right? So basically they are both wrong. But I don't blame David Wood. He's not an Arab. Right? So Mr. Mimi Hijab, your hero, got spanked by Rob Christian. Line of Islam. In the meantime, your Allah still praying. To who is Allah praying? You hypocrite munafiq. And why do you Muslims say Allah does not enter his creation? We showed you that Allah does enter his creation. From Sahih Muslim, from Sahih Bukhari. The Lord enters every night the lowest heaven. So he does enter his creation because according to Islam, heaven, paradise, Jannah is a creation of Allah. So Allah descends, enters Every night, the lowest heaven. Shame on you for lying to us for the last 1400 years. You munafiqun, you hypocrites. Shame on you for being a hypocrite. Liars and deceivers. Shame on you. Go wash your mouth. Go wash your mouth. Liars. Mimi Hijab is nothing but a liar. Claiming to be an Arabic expert who cannot translate the Quran. Trying to rebuke David Wood while at the same time agreeing with David Wood. The guy was not listening carefully to what David Wood had to say. David Wood had got it wrong. And he got it wrong. Mimi Hijab got it wrong. It's not for. It's not to. It's on. So Allah and the angels are praying. Praying. Both they are praying. Allah is praying. The angels are praying on Muhammad. And in the meantime, after 1400 years, Allah is still praying. To who is Allah praying, Muslims? When Allah prays, to who does He pray? I mean, when I pray, I pray to God. But when Allah prays, to who does He pray? No answer. No answer. Guys, didn't the guy say, didn't the guy say that he doesn't smoke? He doesn't drink? Well, if we study the life, guys, please pay attention to the screen. If you study the life of Muhammad carefully, you under, will understand But Muhammad from 610, you see that? When he became a so-called prophet, even before that, but let's say when he became a so-called prophet, when he proclaimed prophecy, prophethood, that happened in 610, in the year 610. Well, he was 40, right? He was 40. He got his so-called first revelation from Jibreel, right? But he died in 632, right? At the age of 63. He died at the age of 63 in the year 632. But only in the last three years, Muhammad started to forbid alcohol. Why? Because he became very sick. So here is the conclusion, guys. Pay attention. Because Muhammad became very ill, because of the poison that was given to him in Khaybar. Remember the story where Muhammad got poisoned by a Jewish woman and he killed her? From that moment on, he stopped drinking because he became sick. And that's the only reason why Muhammad forbade alcohol. Did you see it? Did you catch it? And we are going to prove it to you. We're going to prove to you that Muhammad and the Sahaba, his homeboys, were nothing but party members. They were partying hard, drinking alcohol day and night. And the hadith is in front of you. Look, guys. Look. We would prepare Nabid for the Messenger of Allah. Nabid, guys, is wine. Did you catch it? In a water skin which was fastened on the top of it, on the top and it has a small hole we would prepare an abid in it during the morning and drink it during the evening so muhammad was drinking wine alcohol 
in the evening and we would prepare a bit in it during the evening and drink it during the, uh, the morning you see it and from <clears throat> the book of drinks even the book is called drinks guys alcohol drinks Nabid. so Muhammad was nothing but a alcohol addict he used to drink alcohol so why you Muslims are nothing but hypocrites saying that Muhammad never drank alcohol shame on you the book of drinks this is the book of drinks the proof is in front of you look what it says I met Aisha this is from Sahih Muslim hadith number 2005a I met Aisha and I asked her about Nabit which is wine that was served to Muhammad the holy prophet you see again lying guys Last time in our last live show, I showed you there's nothing called holy in Islam. Remember the Shaykh saying? There is nothing called holy Quran. There is nothing called holy prophet. Here, Muslim being a munafiqun again, hypocrites, liars and deceivers, calling Muhammad holy prophet. Well, there is nothing called holy prophet in Islam. There is nothing called holy in Islam. Al-Muqaddas, exactly, TM Crossbows. You paid attention. So, Aisha, Aisha called on Abyssinian maid servant and said, ask her about it, for it was he who prepared Nabith for the Prophet of Allah. You see it? So, Muhammad was drinking alcohols. He was nothing but an alcohol addict, like his homeboys, the Sahaba, the companions. And from another hadith, again from the book of drinks, which is alcohol, Muhammad drink alcohol not only Muhammad but even also Umar ibn al-Khattab who was the second Khalif Caliph right Khalifa the Nabid that Umar ibn al-Khattab used to drink had turned to vinegar we know when wine becomes old guys when wine becomes old it turns to vinegar right leave a bottle of wine open or a don't drink it for a couple of weeks when after you opened it it will turn to vinegar because it's wine this is how you make vinegar vinegar is made from old wine basically right so Umar ibn Khattab was nothing but an alcohol addict so Muhammad drank alcohol Umar ibn Khattab drank alcohol the Sahaba drank alcohol they call this Da'if but it's not Da'if Right? It's Da'if but it's not Da'if because it's still accepted. <laughs> Guys, don't let them fool you. Da'if hadith is accepted hadith. Right? It's not, it's not uh, as strong as Sahih or Hassan, but it's still accepted. Sunan Nisa, hadith number uh, 5707. The book of drinks again, right? So even the book is called drinks, which is alcohol, which is Nabit. Again, from another hadith. This is Sahih Muslim. This is Sahih. This is not Da'if. Sahih Muslim 205b. 2005b. Aisha reported, we prepared wine, Nabit, wine, wine, wine for Muhammad, for Allah's Messenger, in a water skin. See, again, Muhammad was drinking. Yeah, it sounds awesome, right? I mean, who was. Guys. Guys, who wants to drink wine with me? I, I love to drink wine during this discussion, guys. Wine is good, right? I mean, what's wrong with wine? Because Muhammad drank wine. But we, like I said, he stopped drinking wine because he became very sick in the last three years. Remember? He got envy. He got jealous because of the Sahaba. He used to even go dr intoxicated to the masjid, right? Remember the hadith guys where even Muslims used to go and pray when they are drunk. Muhammad didn't like it, right? So later he started to forbid it because he became ill. So Muhammad again drinking wine, Nabi. Then, then, again, look what it's saying. Whoever would like to regard as forbidden that which Allah and his messenger regard as forbidden, let him regard Nabid as forbidden. So from this moment on, Muhammad started to forbid Nabid. You see it? You, did you catch it? So when Muhammad became ill, right? In the last three years, he started to forbid Nabid. You hypocrite Muslims. 
I mean, your prophet drink alcohol. We showed you that Omar drink alcohol. And you want to attack Christians for drinking alcohol? You munafiq, hypocrite, Muslims. Shame on you. Your prophet was nothing but an alcohol addict. He used to drink together with the Sahaba day in, day out. Shame on you for being a hypocrite, Muslims. What a shame. What a shame, what a shame. Guys, if we go to the Quran, if we go to the Quran, chapter 17, Surat Al Isra, Surat Al Isra, we can read from Ayah 15. Who received guidance? Received it for his own benefit. Who goeth astray, doth so to his own loss. No bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another. So here, according to the Quran, guys, according to the Quran, no one gets the sin of another. So if I sin, guys, you will not receive my sins. Did you catch it, guys? Give me one if, if you catched it. So according to the ayah here, According to this ayah, if you sin, you will not inherit my sin. If I sin, you will not inherit my sin, right? So my sins are not your sins, according to the Quran. You call, okay, so at least four people, five people. Let's see, are there more people who, who caught it? Only five, six, seven? Okay, 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 great, great, great. So look what Muhammad is saying here. Sahih Muslim, Sahih, 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 Echo, Echo, guys. Sahih, Sahih, Sahih Muslim. 27, 67, D. Look how Muhammad is going to rebuke his own Allah. There would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection with as heavy sins as mountain. So the sin is as heavy as the mountain. It's huge sin, right? So, and Allah would forgive them and he would place in their stead the Jews and the Christians. So Allah rebuking himself, spanking himself, putting the sins of the Muslims on the Jews and the Christians. Nice contradiction with this ayah, right guys? Did you catch it? Muhammad is saying this, right? Allah's Prophet is saying this. So here, Muhammad spanking his own Allah. Nice contradiction. Muhammad being here another, again, Another time, nothing but a hypocrite. You hypocrite prophet, why are you contradicting your own Allah? Huh? Why are you, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, why are you contradicting your own Allah? And why are Muslims, after 1400 years, still following this prophet who is spanking his own Allah? Why? Muslims, wake up. For... God's sakes, wake up, open up your eyes and drop Muhammad. He's nothing but a fake prophet. Because a true prophet would have never ever spanked his own Allah, right? Contradicting Allah. Allah is saying, no one's sin will be put on other people's sin or shoulders. But here, Muhammad is saying, the sins of the Muslims will be put on the Jews and the Christians. What a nice, lovely contradiction. Contradiction. Oh yeah. Guys, don't I have a beautiful voice? I mean, you should hear me when I'm under the shower. I sing sweet. Ah, just kidding, guys. My song, uh, sorry, my voice is really bad when I sing. You don't want to hear or listen to me when I sing, guys. It will break all the glass in your house. Here, guys, I went to islamqna.info, islamqna, question and answer, dot info. Sheikh Muhammad Salih al Munajjad is the sheikh of this website, right? This guy has the authority to if issue fatwas. And someone is asking about the same topic. Someone put a question about the same topic. And look what the Shaykh is saying. The Shaykh will agree with me. Praise to Allah. Alhamdulillah. 
Allah, Allah, Allah. Alhamdulillah. This hadith is to be found in Sahih Muslim. Hadith number 2767. Narrated from Abu Musa. Right? Narrated from Abu Musa. May Allah be pleased with him. From the Prophet. So Muhammad, from the mouth of Muhammad. Allah is praying on the Prophet. <laughs> Allah is still praying, guys. So look, look what kind of false translation. Allah is praying. It doesn't have to do anything with blessings. Anyway, who said? So Muhammad is saying, On the day of resurrection, some of the Muslims will come with sins like mountains. But Allah will forgive them and he will put them, the sins, on the Jews and the Christians. Thank you, Muhammad, for contradicting Allah, who is saying no bearer of burdens can bear the burden of another. So no bearer of sins can bear the sins of another. So Muhammad contradicting, we showed you from two sources, from sunnah.com, and we showed you from islamqna.info, which is a heavy Salafi Sunni website, and the Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Salih al munajjid what a beautiful name. Agreeing with us. Nice contradiction by the Prophet of Islam. What a shame. What a shame, what a shame. You hypocrite Prophet. Why are you such a hypocrite? Why are Muslims such hypocrites for believing in such a filthy, disgusting Prophet who is contradicting his own Lord Allah? Right? Why? Muslims, don't you care about your salvation? If you really cared about your salvation, you would have never followed a prophet who is contradicting the Quran, like Muhammad. Nice contradiction. Uh, guys, I think tonight when you sleep, you will dream about my lovely voice, you know? Because I'm singing for all of you. God bless you. <laughs> now don't do it, guys. You, you will stay awake all night. Don't dream about my voice, guys. So, guys, I went to the Bible. I went to the Bible. Because Muslims always say, Muhammad is a prophet and he comes from the blood of Ishmael. Right? Muslims always say, Muhammad comes from the blood of Ishmael. We are going to destroy that claim. Here, today, here and today, we are going to destroy the claim that Muhammad is from the blood of Ishmael. We're going to spank Muhammad and we're going to prove to you that that's not true. Read with me, guys. This is Genesis chapter 17. Genesis 17 from the King James Version. Verse 19, and God said, guys, please pay attention. God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son and indeed... Son indeed. So here God is saying to Abraham, your wife Sarah will bear thee a son and thou shalt call his name Isaac. Catch it? So Isaac will be the son of Abraham, his true heir, right? His true heir. And I will establish my covenant with him. With who? With Isaac and Isaac alone, not with Ishmael, right? So his, the covenant, the contract with God will be with Isaac, not with the son of the slave girl, Ishmael. It will be with Isaac and Isaac alone, with the blood of Isaac, with him for an everlasting covenant. So it's going to be an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. Whose seed? Isaac's seed. Whose house? Ran's house. Uh, sorry, Isaac's house. Whose house? Isaac's house. Not Ishmael, but Isaac. Whose house? Ron's house. I love that song, guys. Sorry. Yeah, I, I know. I'm from the 80s and the 90s. What can I do? I'm an old guy. So, and as for Ishmael, guys, and as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Right? So the prophethood will come from the blood of Isaac, not from Ishmael. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, who blessed Ishmael, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceedingly. 
right? Exceedingly, 12 princes shall he beget, and I will make him a great nation, right? So Ishmael from his blood will be a great nation, and he will bless, and he will get 12 princes. But not the prophethood, he will not carry the prophethood bloodline. Did you catch it, guys? Because the covenant that God made was with Isaac only, and only with Isaac. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac. Again, God is making sure that Abraham got it. Right? Here he's saying it. And again here he's saying that Abraham will understand it carefully. Abraham, be sure my covenant will be established with Isaac, not with Ishmael, which Shara shall bear unto thee at this set time in the next year. Right? Did you catch it? And if we go to Genesis 25, chapter 25, we can read the following, guys. Same, same uh, book, right? The book of Genesis. Abraham gave everything that he owned to his son Isaac. He gave everything not to Ishmael, but to his son Isaac. Again, to the sons of his concubines, however. Now, this is very important, guys. So, that means the one who... Ishmael, because he is the son of the concubine, uh, Hagar, right? However, he gave gifts while he was still living, as he sent them away. So Ishmael was sent away to the land of Canaan, away from his son Isaac. Away from son. So he kicked everyone, basically, and he stayed and raised his son Isaac. Did you catch it? Because... Isaac is the important one. From his blood will, be, will come prophets, not of the bloodline of Ishmael. If we continue the death of Abraham, the whole span of Abraham's life was 175 years. Then he breathed his last, dying at a ripe old age, growing old after full life, and he was gathered to his people. His sons, Isaac and Ishmael, buried him in the cave of Machpelah, sorry if I'm butchering the name, guys. In the field of Ephron, son of Zohar, the Hittite, which faces Mamre. The field that Abraham had bought from the Hittites, there, was, there he was buried next to his wife, Sarah. After the death of Abraham, God blessed his son Isaac, who lived near Beer Laharoi. Now here, guys, now we're going to show you that the prophecy of God, who said he will bless Ishmael and give him 12 sons. Here, guys, the prophecy has been fulfilled. Now watch. These are the descendants of Abraham's son Ishmael, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's slave, bore to Abraham. These are the names of the Ishmael's sons, listed in the order of their birth. Ishmael's firstborn, Nebaioth, Kedar. Now, pay attention to this name, okay? Don't forget about this name. Adbil, Mipsam, Mishma, Duma, Masa, Haddad, Tema, Yethur, Naphish, and Kedama. So these are the 12 sons of Ishmael, right? These are the sons of Ishmael, their names by their villages and encampments, 12 chieftains of as many tribal groups. So here, guys, that prophecy has been fulfilled here. And here it ends, right? It's over. The story of Ishmael and his sons, it's, it's over. And it continues with who? With Isaac. Right? You see? Birth of Israel and Jacob. Did you catch it? So it continues from Isaac's bloodline all the way down to Jesus. Right? So Muslims, when you say Muhammad is from Ishmael, that you of course cannot prove to us, you are telling us basically that Muhammad is not a prophet. Muhammad is not a prophet because he does not come from the bloodline, the prophetic bloodline of Isaac. Because Isaac has the covenant with him. God made the covenant with Isaac, not with Ishmael as we showed you. Right? So, Muslims, we love it when you say that Muhammad is from the bloodline of Ishmael. Because you are Proving to us by saying that, you are proving to us that Muhammad is a fake prophet. And we know many fake prophets 
lived in the time of uh, Muhammad. What about Musaylam al kadhab Another fake prophet like Muhammad, right? And if we go and do some digging, guys, do some research. Remember when I said, keep attention to the name Kedar? Kedar, guys, he went and lived here. Muhammad lived in Medina and Mecca, right? All the way down here. Look how many miles difference this is. So here, the sons of Ishmael stayed. Not here, as they claim. Liars? You Muslim liars? So Ishmael and his son Kedar did not go to Mecca or Medina. Exclamation mark. They had nothing to do with Muhammad. So again, not only does Muhammad not come from the bloodline of Isaac, the prophet, prophetic bloodline, he only has nothing, he also has nothing to do with Ishmael. So Muslims, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. On both points, Muhammad fails. Did you catch it, guys? Here, this is Kedar. Here is Medina. Look how many miles this is. It's all the way to our son. Right? If we go to the Quran, guys, we're going also to prove from the Quran Muhammad is not a prophet. From the Quran. This is Surah Al Ankabut, the spider. Chapter 29, the spider, Al-Ankabud, Ayah 27. And we gave Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, and ordained among his progeny prophethood. Who is, the, who is the prophethood coming from? From Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Where is Ishmael? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You see it? Prophethood and revelation. So... <laughs> Ishmael is not even mentioned here. Uh-oh, Muslims. So according to the Quran, the bloodline of prophethood continues from Isaac to Jacob and so on, all the way to Jesus. Not with Ishmael, according to the Quran. From another ayah, we gave him Isaac. Who, who did he give? Abraham. We gave him Isaac and Jacob. See? <laughs> even Continuing from the blood of Isaac and Jacob, David, Solomon, Job, Joseph, Moses, Aaron, you see? Ishmael has nothing to do with this. Muhammad has nothing to do with the pro uh, prophethood, the bloodline of the prophets. So here Muhammad, when he copied this from the Bible, this is nothing but a copy-paste. Muhammad busted himself. Rob is a liar, very cute. Are you going to cry now? You're still calling me liar? You truly have no shame, you have no dignity, while the proof is in front of you. You truly, you Muslims truly have no shame, no dignity. No, no, you, you don't have shame for yourself. You don't respect your own brains, else you would have denounced Muhammad a long time ago. The proof is in front of you. Ishmael has nothing to do with prophecy, has nothing to do with prophethood. The bloodline of the prophets come from Isaac, as we prove to you from the Bible and even from the Quran. And if we go again to another map, you see the son of Ishmael, Kedar. This is why that place is named after him. Kedar lived here. Muhammad lived in Medina here, all the way down here. Mecca and Medina were all the way down here. You see? Abraham never went to Mecca. Ishmael never went to Mecca. His sons didn't went, went to Mecca. And guys, this is also called Arabia. Not only here. Don't let them fool you. Jordan is called Arabia. So he's staying basically here in the, in the area called Jordan nowadays. This is why it's called Kedar. It's named after the son of Ishmael. So, Muslims, your, you, you, your Imams, you Muslims, only contradict history. A history is the worst weapon of Islam. History is the sword against Islam. The sword against your lies. And deception. Muslims, we are in 2019. We are in 2019. We don't believe in your lies anymore. People actually do study. We can do our own research and come to the conclusion that Muhammad was nothing but a fake prophet. 
Lion of Islam, I hope today you will man up and call me after the, today's teaching. So, guys, by this, we can conclude that Muhammad is nothing but a hypocrite. Muslims are nothing but hypocrites, liars and deceivers. If there is any Muslim, please call me so we can have a nice discussion. My Skype is open. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed today's teaching. I hope you really loved it and it benefited everyone. Like I said, don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button. Also click on the notification bell so you'll get notifications when we are live on or upload videos. Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Huh? Do we have any Muslim? Call, it, call me, Ultimate uh, Shirk, call me. Mr. Ultimate Shirk, if you are still listening, call me. Lion of Islam, call me, you kid. You, are you a kid? Don't you have any dignity or shame to defend your prophet? Call me. Let your mom call me, man. The man of the house, like CP always says. The man of the house, your mom. Maybe your dad is afraid to call me. Fluffy Kid Ferris, oh, you're, you're, I know Lion of Islam, I know you are the, you're now the kitten of Islam because you are afraid to call me, like always. Last time you called me, you got spanked pretty hard, so now you're stopped calling me, eh? Do you have any Muslim? Huh? Where is Sayyid, guys, there's a guy who calls himself Sayyid F11 or something. That guy promised me to call me. He's the guy who goes on Speaker's Corner in London and debates uh, our sister, uh, uh, what, sorry, I forgot, what was, Hatun, sorry, Hatun. Yeah, his, his name is Yahya, right? Yeah, Yahya. The guy is basically uh, John, you know, Yahya, it means John. John, on Speaker's Corner, call me, where are you, why are you hiding, Abdul? You promised me to call me. Maybe we finally we have a speaker's corner, Abdul, who has the courage and the knowledge to call me. We are out of Muslims again. Guys, do you have any question? Our lovely guests in the live chat, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Anyone who has a question? Maybe someone wants to call me. Are there any Christians who wants to call in? My Skype ID is the Europe Christian. The one. If you're going to mock our sisters here, I will spank you and I will ban you. So be nice. The one, you're a Muslim, call me. The Arab Christian, call me. You're, you're a Christian? You're a Christian? Oh, sorry, okay. Sorry for insulting you, calling you a Muslim. My bad. Please forgive me. Who wants to call? Yes. Who wants to call? The line is open, guys. Are there any Christians or sisters? Uh, sorry, Christian sisters or brothers who wants to call me? Call me. Be your Christian. Thank you for putting that in the live chat. Uh, long years of Jerusalem. God bless you. I want to ask God to bless our admins in the chat. They are doing an amazing job. God, please bless them. Hey Malika, Diza, what's up? Yeah, I see you, Malika, I see you. Do you have a question, sister? I see you. Okay, go ahead. Fire away your question.
Sayyid al Bukhari, 1237. What's your question about it? What's your question, new and learner? Okay, um, please get me your question and I will answer. It. CV is asking a question. In Quran, there are several surahs by given name of animal. Why Allah give the title like Al-Baqarah, female cow? What is the relation meaning of female cow with all of the verse? Well, uh, CV, uh, the Quran is full of animals, you know, because in that time, I think in that time, because there were a lot of animals and Muhammad loved to give uh, his chapters names. And he's, once he saw a cow or he saw a spider or, or a goat or whatever, he gave them names of animals. And about the, the cow, chapter of the cow, Here's why, because according to the chapter, a guy was killed, a Jewish guy was killed, and to know who his killer is, they slaughtered a cow, I kid you not, they slaughtered a cow, they took the bone of or the tail of the cow, a part of the dead cow that they slaughtered, and they started to beat the dead guy with it to resurrect him so he can point to them who his killer is. So Muhammad was making jokes inside the Quran. That's why the biggest chapter is called Al-Baqarah, the cow. Kill a cow, take a part of the cow, start beating the hell out of the dead guy, so he can get resurrected again. Voodoo, you know, it's the voodoo chapter, basically. Do voodoo on him, so he can point the fingers at his killer. That's why it's called Al-Baqarah. The voodoo of Islam. Any more questions? Anyone wants to call in? Please call me. If you like to have a discussion or a nice chat with me. Last time our sister Renee called. And we had a nice talk with her. She's a dear sister from the Paul Talk days. And she's also an admin on David Wood, I think. He's David Wood, his live chat. <clears throat> no Muslim are we are we out of Muslims? No Muslims can call us to defend Islam? What a shame. So you are basically agreeing with us that you Muslims are nothing but munafiqun. You are nothing but the hypocrites who agree with the hypocrite prophet of Islam. No, no, no. Line of Islam. Your idol, the moon idol Allah, is a dead idol. Right? Right? You believe in at least one idol because it says Allahu Ahad. Allahu Ahad means Allah is one of many. Many what? Many idols. Allahu Samad means a, an idol who is not hollow, it's solid. Samad, guys, Samad, the meaning of Samad, Allahu Samad means solid. Solid is idol. An idol is solid because it's from rock, right? It's from stone. So Allah is nothing but a moon idol stone that the pagans worshipped. And even Muhammad bowed down, as we mentioned in the last live show. Muhammad bowed down and did sujood, prostration. To Allah, al Uzza, wal Manat, the three bird idols, the daughters of Allah, who used to carry the prayers of the pagans all the way to Allah. Right? Even the word Mushrik, guys, has nothing to do with pagan. Mushrik means someone who associates a partner with Allah. That means basically intercessors. Because Allah, al Uzza, wal Manat were intercessors for the uh, pagans. They call them pagans, but they, they were basically muhaidun. They even also practiced Tawheed, which is nothing but a unification of Allah with his many intercessors, which are like Allah al Uzza wal Manat. So Muhammad was a mushrik. The Muslims are mushrikun. The pagans that they love to call pagans, the idolaters of Pre-Islamic Mecca, they were practicing Tawheed. Tawheed is nothing but collection of intercessors associated with Allah, the supreme moon idol called Allah, 
who is the Samad, stone, solid idol. That's the meaning of Samad. Allah Wahad, Allah Samad. Allah is one of many, many, many what? Samad, stone, solid idols. Because Tawheed means unification, right? Unification of at least two idols. Three idols, four, at least two, right? Unification. To unify Allah together with his intercessors. Right? Yeah, Muhammad himself, Malaya Christian prince. The Sabians, right? Muhammad himself was a Sabian at once. Because he took the five pillars from them. The five pillars of Islam. The Sabians used to go around the Kaaba. The Sabians had the Shahada. Sabians, Muhammad was a Sabian. And the Sabians also hated Jews. This is why Muhammad hates Jews. The Sabians were enemies of the Jews. This is why Muhammad hates Jews. Right? Line of Islam. Since you are a coward, no one will answer your questions. You have a question? Call me. Don't be a coward. Fluffy kid. I know you don't like to get spanked life on air again. So th this is why you're not calling me. What's with Ibn Abbas? Member and tag. Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, right? He's called the Shaykh of Islam. What about him? He's the cousin of the Prophet of Islam. Are you out of Muslims? Any Muslim? Line, line of Islam, you're nothing but a kitten of Islam and you are nothing but a troll. You're a waste of air, my friend. Stay in Islam. Islam is good for people like you who don't care about themselves, who do not respect their own brains. You know, Muslims always love to mention Bart Ehrman. You know what Bart Ehrman said when he was asked about Islam, if he was interested to learn about Islam? He said, if one day I start disrespecting my own brains, I will start studying Islam. That was his opinion about Islam. Even Bart Ehrman calls Islam nothing but a joke. Yeah, take beer like Muhammad used to take a beer, a nice beer with Omar ibn al-Khattab. They love to drink beer. Right? Well, wine in this case, Nabit. The book of drinks, remember? <laughs> the book of drinks. Muhammad loved to drink Nabit. He was nothing but a party boy. Right? Dancing and partying with his homeboys, the Sahaba. A member on tag, stop stealing the Wi-Fi of your neighbors, man. Uh, refresh if you have problems with your uh, just refresh maybe then it will work on my end it doesn't say anything wrong so and don't forget to put uh, the screen on 72p you will get a better uh, screen then when you do that screen quality Any Muslim? Do we have a Christian who wants to call in? Maybe you want to have a nice talk with me? 
Normally I don't do that, but today it's I will allow it. Is there any proof in the Quran hadith that Jesus got jo Johnson Pro? Yes, there is. According to the Quran, according to the Quran, Jesus is the eternal word of Allah. Kalimat Allah, the eternal word of Allah. Kalimat Allah. When you are Kalimat Allah, when we ask Muslim, is the word of Allah eternal, uncreated? They say yes. So if Jesus is the eternal word of Allah, that means he's uncreated uncorrupted eternal word of God. Muhammad copied that directly from John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was God and the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1.14. He's also the spirit of Allah, exactly Revelation 22.30. So here he's the spirit of Allah and he is the eternal word of Allah, which makes him equal with Allah. Thank you very much, Muslim. And yes, Malaya Christian Prince, thank, guys, thank you for helping me to help you. Someone in the text saying, chapter 9, let me show you, Quran.com, chapter 9, 31. If we go to there, it says, and this is a false translation, don't pay attention to the translation, because you know Muslims, when they <clears throat> translate the Quran, they are nothing but liars and deceivers. Chapter at Toba, which is also another name for the chapter of the sword. This is one of the last chapters for the Quran. I don't know why Muslims called it number nine, because why well, they put it in nine? Because it's one of the last chapters. Why is it nine? The Quran has 114 chapters, right? So Muhammad, his Quran was corrupted by the Muslim hands. So here it says, they have taken their rabbis and monks as well as the Messiah, son of Mary, as Lord Bissala. So here, as you, when you read it like this, this is nothing but a false translation because the Arabic says, Min duni Allahi wal Masiha. Instead of Allah and al Masih. So here, Muhammad is attacking the Christians for worshipping, which is a lie, of course. Muhammad here is lying about the Christians. We have taken our rabbis and monks as gods with Allah and the Messiah. So who is God here? Who are the gods? Allah and the Messiah. Did you catch it? Because it says, Min duni Allahi wa al Messiah. Right? So here, Muhammad made a huge, huge, huge mistake. Use this, guys. Because the translation, they tried to fix it in the translation. They tried to fix the disaster that Muhammad made in this chapter. You know? So scholars, translators, and in this case, three women. No, no, this is another translation, sorry. This is not Sahih and you know, this is Mustafa Khattab. So they are trying to fix the mistakes <clears throat> of Muhammad in the Quran by changing the words in the translation, changing the, the order basically. But it says clearly they have taken their rabbis and monks in the Arabic instead of Allah and the Messiah. Did you catch it? So the gods here are Allah and the Messiah. So this, see how important it is to know Arabic, guys? So, we told you that Jesus is Ruh Allah, the Spirit of Allah, is the eternal, uncorrupted, uncreated Word of Allah. And not only that, He is God's together with Allah. Min duni Allahi wal Masih. Right? So here, Muhammad is attacking the Christians for worshipping their rabbis and monks besides the Messiah and Allah. Sahih International guys, which, which is the most often used translation 
in Islam for the Quran is nothing but a deception, right? Here again, nice deception. And don't forget that Sahih International, guys, is written by three women. What did Muhammad say about women? Women in Islam are half brain. So why would you as a Muslim accept the translation of three women? That doesn't make sense. Yes, they are called half brain. And this translation is done by three women. And even Saudi Arabia said it's a nice translation. Hypocrite Muslims. On the other hand, Muslimas, women, are half-brained, but at the same time, their translation is the most used translation in the world. What a nice hypocrisy, right? Hypocrite Muslims, like their prophet. Any Muslim. Guys, like I said, don't forget to subscribe, please, and smash the like button. Also, click on the notification bell to get notifications when we go live or upload videos. Are there more questions? Yeah. Muhammad is rolling. Actually, Muhammad is rotting in his grave, right? He's rotting in his grave. You know, when Muhammad said, the bodies of the prophets do not decay actually his own family rebuked him because after three days muslims still did not put muhammad in the grave and his body started to decompose started to decay started to rot and al-abbas went and he smelled the stinking rotting body of muhammad he said please for the love of god Put Muhammad under the ground. His body stinking. His body is stinking. So here, from the family of Muhammad, he got spanked again by his own family. When he said the bodies of the prophets do not decay, which is a lie, which is nothing but a contradiction of the Old Testament. Because in the Old Testament, we can find that the prophet's body do decay. If we go to the Old Testament, we see that the bones of Joseph and Elisha was ca were carried and were put in the ground by the Israelites. So, are you a true prophet if you contradict other prophets? No. And don't forget that Muhammad sweared by the same Torah. He sweared by it, he judged by it. When he's asked for the Torah to judge by the Torah. Remember the hadith, right? Are there any more questions? Are there any Imams or Istas? Are the Istas of Indonesia, are, are they hiding? Are they that afraid? What about uh, Surah 1933? Uh, it's talking about when Jesus is a baby. Let's let's go to it. Let's see. I think that's the one, right? That you are talking about. <clears throat> Peace upon me the day I was born. So here, according to this ayah, you know, this ayah doesn't make sense, but anyway. So here, Isa, the Islamic Jesus, Isa, is saying, as a baby, he, he's just born, right? He's saying, Peace upon me the day I was born, the day I die. And the day I'll be raised back to life. So here, the death and resurrection of Jesus is confirmed. Because Jesus here is talking as a baby, right? So he, he is born, he will die, and he will be resurrected after his death. So here Muhammad made again poo-poo, right? Poo-poo.
Any more questions? <clears throat> no screen? Oh, sorry guys, forgot to... Uh, my bad. Yeah. So here, Isa is saying, Peace upon me on the day I was born, as a baby speaking, the day I die, and the day I'll be raised back to life. So here, the death and resurrection of Jesus is being confirmed, according to the Quran. Because Jesus is talking as a baby. Jesus is born, he will die, because remember in the Bible, in the New Testament, Jesus say. I will raise this body in three days. I will raise this temple three days. So Muhammad copy pasting, put it in the Quran. The days of Ashun. Days of Ashun? What do you mean Ashun? Is that an Indonesian thing? I never heard of Ashun before, to be honest with you. Ashun? I don't know what you mean, man. Sorry. <clears throat> Do you mean Ashura or something? I don't know what Ashu means. You mean Ashura? Do you mean Ashura? <clears throat> anyway. Ashura, okay. What about the day of Ashura? Well, basically, uh, Ashura, guys, you know, Muslims always say we don't like to copy the Jews and the Christians, right? But Muhammad here was copying the Jews. Right? Muhammad copying the Jews. Like Eid al-Adha. Copying the Jews. Again, Muhammad is copying the Jews. And the Shia, they say about uh, the Ashura, that it washes away their sins. Which is contradicting Islam. Right? But we know Muhammad simply stole that day from the Jews. It's nothing but a... fake prophet who was stealing from Jews. You know, you need to know that Muhammad, when he went to the Jews in Yathrib, that he later called Medina, he wanted to become friends with the Jews. He wanted to reconcile with the Jews, right? But the Jews were not stupid. They knew the scripture, right? So immediately they understood Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet, right? Muhammad is nothing but a fake prophet. So they rejected him, and from that moment on, he started to attack the Jews, expel the Jews, right? When he understood, hey, the Jews are too smart, they, they, they finally understood that I'm nothing but a fake prophet. They, he wanted them to be expelled, and he forced Jizya on them, like the Christians, right? And the Jews even trolled Muhammad, guys. The Jews, they trolled Muhammad many times. Let me show you something, guys. <clears throat> Let's see. Guys, do you remember my cartoon? Let me show you my cartoon, guys. Let me show you my cartoon. Do you hear it, guys? Can you hear it? Can you see the screen? Hello. Yeah, okay. And God bless. Today's topic is about the punishment of the grave. Pay attention, guys. This is a very frightening topic for Muslims. But let us go first to the hadith to understand about the punishment of the grave. 
Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6366. Narrated Aisha, two old ladies from among the Jewish ladies entered upon me and said, the dead are punished in their graves, but I thought they were telling a lie. So notice, two Jewish women came in to troll Aisha. They, are, they were joking because there is no Jew who <laughs> believes in the punishment of the grave. So immediately Aisha was not stupid. She knew they were lying to her. They were telling jokes, right? And let me continue. And did not believe them in the beginning. So Aisha, she didn't believe them in the beginning. When they went away and the prophet of Islam entered upon me, I said, O oh Allah's messenger, two old ladies and told him the whole story. Muhammad said, they told the truth. Did you catch it? So Muhammad was hearing about this from Aisha, about the punishment of the grave that the two Jewish ladies mentioned to Aisha, and she didn't believe them, and they, she told them, you're lying. But Muhammad, of course, everything he heard from the Jews, he adopted into Islam. And now after 1400 years, Jews who lie to Aisha, after 1400 years, Muslims still believe in the lie, in the joke of the two Jewish ladies who were trolling Aisha. Amazing, huh? And Muslims are frightened to death. They count to days when they will die and they will be put inside the grave. Because two angels will come and they will test them and they will ask them a couple questions to see if they are Muslims, true believers or not. Let me play for you a video from a Muslim sheikh who is explaining the punishment inside the grave. And when the soul leaves the deceased body and is carried to his grave the righteous soul will say bring me closer bring me closer and the wicked one will say oh my Allah why are they taking me after the funeral prayer on the deceased is over the grave will say I am the house of exile I am the house of loneliness I am the house of dust I am the house of worms and as the hadith says, if the human is placed inside his grave and his friends start to leave, his soul returns back to him until he hears their footsteps fade away. And then suddenly two angels appear to him. Their names are Munkar wa Manakir and they help the deceit to sit straight and start testing him. So if the deceit was a true Muslim believer, they will ask him, Who is your Lord? My Lord is Allah. What is your religion? My religion is Islam. Who is the man who sent to you? He is Rasulullah. And how do you know? I read the book of Allah. And I believe in him and accepted him. So he finally passed the exam and he will be rewarded with the gift of Jannah. And an overwhelming voice from above will say, Oh my righteous Abdul, quickly open for him the doors of Jannah. Then a man with beautiful appearance come by and says, I am your righteous deeds. But for the Kafir, the angels come and ask him, Who is your Lord? Oh, uh, uh, I don't know, Madri. What is your religion? Uh, uh, I don't know. Who is the man who lived among you? Uh, 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 I don't know, Madri. And the angels tell him, you don't know and you failed your test. And the poor man 
failed his exam and test and the punishment of the grave starts and a voice from heaven says he lied bring down fire upon him and the angel starts to hammer him down with a big sledgehammer such amazing big hammer that if you throw it down it can break a mountain into small pieces of rocks and dust and the kafir screams and crimes from the pain and suffering so loud that all creation can hear him except mankind and jinn and he is struck down until he turns to dust and Allah turns him back to normal and the angels strike him down with a final blow and his grave starts to close around him until he limbs crushed and earth is commanded to swallow him and it swallows him completely and a snake crawl in his grave and a bold snake called Sarban al-Aqra and the snake starts to eat his flesh from head to toe and a man appears from out of nowhere with an ugly face filthy clothes and a bad smell and he says I'm your wicked deeds and then his place in fire is shown to him <laughs> Lord of mercy. Muslims actually believe in this, guys. Muslims actually believe in this. They are scared to death because of this. For almost a Muslims actually are scared of death that they will fail the test, guys. Poor Muslims. Muhammad stole this from the Jewish ladies, as we mentioned from the hadith. He adopted the lie, the jokes of the Jews, into Islam. And Muslims are still, after 1400 years, are scared of the death of the punishment of the grave. Two angels coming and testing the Muslims in their graves. And if they fail the tests, the angels will start hammering down the Muslims inside their graves with a big sledgehammer. Pow! Pow! Spank, spank. Right? You know, I could have made the snake part much more graphic, but you know. Anyway. Ta'ban al aqra Bold snake. A bold snake uh, raping the hell out of the Muslims in their, uh, basically, in their, uh, in their, uh, yeah, graves. Eating them alive. Muslims, for the love of God, please denounce Muhammad as a, nothing but a fake prophet. Leave Islam. Come back to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. As you see, we showed you a nice cartoon. And Islam is nothing but a comedy, nothing but a cartoon created by Islam, by Muhammad. It's nothing but a man-made fake religion. Right? I hope, you, guys, did you like the cartoon? I hope it was not too scary. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. You did, huh? Any Muslim? Muslims, do you really believe in the punishment of the grave? I mean, come on, man. Yeah, it's, you know, like our friend. Hey, welcome to the chat uh, at church. We have a really uh, dear brother in Christ here. He said, it's nothing but scare tactics, right? Muhammad implemented this Jewish trolling. You know, the Jews, they knew everything they told Muhammad. Muhammad would have implemented it in Islam. So it was nothing but a troll tactic. And Muhammad implemented it because he knew he could use it to scare the hell out of the Muslims if they leave Islam. So what's the best way to do it? Implement the punishment of apostasy, right? You leave Islam, you, you will get killed by Muslims. You leave Islam, you will be punished inside your grave. So back then, scare tactics was the best weapon the best tools to be implemented in Islam to keep Islam 
sorry to keep Muslims in Islam. And the moment Muhammad died, Muslims started to leave Islam left and right. Even in Saudi Arabia, that they now call Saudi Arabia. Muslims started to leave left and right. And when Abu Bakr was in power, he waged the war on them called the Ridda Wars, right? The Ridda Wars. And he sent his general, the cannibal, his general, the cannibal, Khalid ibn Walid. Khalid ibn Walid was a cannibal. He even killed a man, cooked his head, and he ate the man his head. He ate the head of Malik. He was nothing but a cannibal. He set people on fire. He put Muslims on fire. He dug a big hole, I kid you not. He dug a big hole. He put Muslim men in the hole who did not pay tribute to Abu Bakr. They, they wanted to follow uh, Ali. They didn't want to accept Abu Bakr. And Abu Bakr ordered Khalid ibn Walid to dug a big hole, put Muslims inside of it, and put them on fire. Because those people, those Muslims, didn't want to follow Abu Bakr as the leader, right? And he even killed a guy, like I said, Khalid ibn Walid. He killed a guy and he ate him up. And he, not only that, he even raped his wife. He raped his wife. Yeah, Silence of the Lambs called Cannibal Khalid Lecter Al-Walid. Right? You remember that video, guys, that CP and I shared online on our YouTube channels? A couple years ago on Egyptian TV, live Egyptian TV, two Muslims were talking about that Al-Azhar University, the, the number one Azhar University, teaching their Imam students, the Imam that will be PhD Imams, to eat the apostates of Islam, eat ex-Muslims, cook them and eat them. That's what they still teach in Al-Azhar University, guys. Where did they get it from, do you think? Yes, what? What? You, you didn't see the video? Shame on you, Sophie. Nah. You want me to play the video, guys? You want me to play the video or is it too much for today? Or shall I just give you the link? Let's see if I can give you the link. <clears throat> Christians, stop being lazy. Watch our videos, man. Uh, let's see. Where did I put that video? Where did I put that video? I have so many videos, sometimes it's really hard <laughs> to find my own videos. Uh, da, da, da. Me, where did I keep it? Oh, here. Here's the link. Let's see. Here's the link. Any Muslims? Yeah, killing is not enough. They got to eat them too. You know, you are allowed, according to Allah's university, you are allowed to teach your followers inside the mosque as an imam to eat the ex-Muslims, grill them and eat them. It's in their books. 
during the video, if you watch the video, you'll see that they are discussing two Muslims, the TV host and the guest. They are discussing and they are shocked that the TV host never heard about this, like many Muslims. A lot of Muslims don't know about the cannibalism inside the Islam. So he was shocked and he's asking the government, the Egyptian government, to take actions. Why are you allowing Al-Azhar University to teach that you are allowed to kill an ex-Muslim, kill the apostates, grill their meat, and eat them? Nice kebab. Ex-Muslim kebab. Apostasy kebab. That's new on the menu, guys. When, so... When, Make sure when you go to a uh, halal restaurant, halal, make sure they don't serve you ex-Muslims on the, from the menu. Make sure it's, you know. You got to be thinking twice now about the menu, right? <laughs> At a halal, halal restaurant. Shish kebab. Hey, Air Church, what's up, buddy? You want to call me Air Church? Call me, Air Church. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Can you call me? Let's have a nice talk. Last time, our dear sister Renee called me. If you have time, bro, you can call me live on Skype. Maybe we can discuss a couple of things if you like. Any Muslim? Do you have Muslims? Are they are we out of Muslims again, man? What's what's with that, man? Love you too, Air Church. God bless you, my friend. If you have time, call in, bro. Air Church. Call me on Skype if you like. My Skype ID is the Arab Christian. <clears throat> well, uh, <clears throat> about sixty nine forty, someone is asking about chapter sixty nine forty. If you read with me, here the Muslims are fixing they are fixing the disasters of Muhammad they are fixing the disasters of Muhammad it says it's nothing but the word of Muhammad indeed this Quran is the recitation of a noble messenger but it doesn't say recitation it says in the Arabic the word so it's not the word of Allah. This is not the word of Allah, guys. This is the word of Muhammad. It has nothing to do with divine revelation. It's the word. It, the Quran is nothing but the word of Muhammad. Muslims, wake up. The Quran is not the word of Allah. It's the word of Muhammad and the proof is in front of you. Right? La qawlu. Laqawlu, guys. Here, let me play the, the word in Arabic. I hope you can hear it. Laqawlu. The word. Right? The word. Laqawlu. It's the word of Muhammad. The Quran is the word of Muhammad. Any more questions? Yeah, member and tech. You know, every chapter of the Quran, every chapter of the Quran is nothing but a big disaster. Name me one chapter and it contains many disasters. 
chapter 1. I mean, if we go to chapter 1, you know, Muslims recite this chapter every day. At least 15 to 70 times a day. I kid you not. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, most merciful. Is Allah saying in the name of Allah? I mean, when we ask Muslims, is the Quran the speech of Allah? They say yes. Okay, so if Allah is the one talking, is Allah saying in the name of Allah? That doesn't make sense. Is Allah saying Allah, all praises for Allah? And uh, guys, by the way, we showed you Muhammad Hijab, right? When we started the teaching of the day. We spanked uh, Muhammad Hijab. Muhammad Hijab, when he debated David Wood, and he got spanked hard by David Wood, he went to Ghana. He went to hide in Africa. And when he came back, he said, I meant to say, Allah praises Muhammad. What? Mimi Hijab. Allah is praising Muhammad? That doesn't make sense because according to the Quran and the proof is in front of you, all praise is only for Allah, not for Muhammad. All praise is for Allah. So is Allah sharing his glory, his praise with Muhammad now? So thank you, Muhammad Hijab. Instead of correcting yourself, you are making it much more, much more worse. I kid you not, in speaker's corner, Muhammad Hijab tried to fix it, but he made it even more worse. Since when is the praise for Muhammad? According to the Quran, all praise, not 1%, not 2%, but all praise is for Allah, not for Muhammad. So here, when Mimi Hijab said, when Mimi Hijab said, Allah is praising Muhammad, that's nothing but clear, shirk which is nothing but an unforgivable sin. So I hope Allah, when Mimi Hijab dies and he's inside his grave, he can answer the questions to the angels. And he got not punished by the angels. But we know that shirk is the unforgivable sin in Islam. So Mimi Hijab, you will go to hell anyway for saying that. On speaker's corner. In in <laughs> instead of fixing the problem that he created during that debate with David Wood, he made it even more worse for himself. He's nothing but a kid. He has no clue about Islam. And he has more than, than 200k subscribers. 200,000 subscribers. And look, look, Rob Christian has only 4,000. I have 4,000 subscribers and Mimi Hijab that I'm spanking here has more than me. Maybe he has even more than Christian Prince. You see, you Christians are nothing but lazy people, man. <laughs> and I, guys, I'm just joking. It's not about the numbers. It's not about the numbers, really. Only the truth and only the truth is the most important thing because Jesus is the truth, and only the truth will set us free. It's not about the numbers. Even if one person, even if one person accepts Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, there is a big celebration in heaven according to the Bible. So it's not about the numbers. In the end, it's about the truth. Right? I don't have more subscribers than CP. CP has way more than me. Liz. I think you're talking about Muhammad Hijab, right? <clears throat> I only have 4,000 subscribers, man. I'm doing a really bad job. Air Church, you want to call me, bro? You want to call me live on air? <laughs> Batman Rob. <laughs> you like DC Comics, don't you, the one? Why can't I be the Flash, man? I don't want to be Robin. Um, which part is cursing Dua? Here, this is the part. Chapter 1, if you can see the screen, chapter 1, I 7. The path of those you have blessed. So here the Muslims, when they pray, they repeat the curses of Allah. The path of those you have blessed, those are the Muslims. Take notes, please. 
Those are the Muslims, not those you are displeased with or anger. The word is anger, so this is a bad translation. That, uh, that you are in anger with, those are the Jews. And all those who are straight, those are the Christians. Okay? Those are the Jews and those are the Christians. So here, Muslims, they repeat the curses of Allah on the Jews and the Christians. And we showed you from the hadith how Muhammad, when he prays in the morning, Fajr prayer, Muhammad, every time invoking his Allah to curse such and such person and such and such person and such and such person. Three times always, right? The magic number three. Muhammad, every time he went to someone to see him, he said, Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. Salaamu Alaikum. What do we call such a person, guys? Help me to help you. In English, what's the right word for it? When someone has to do something always three times. You, that, that's an illness in the brains, right? Those people are having bad illness in the brain, right? When you have to do everything. This, it's a mental disorder. Compulsive disorder. Exactly. Thank you. So here, Muhammad, every time he went to see people, he said, Salaamu Alaikum. Peace on you, peace on you. Peace. Every time he has to do th things three times. Curse people three times. Say hello three times. Right? Muhammad had a mental compulsive disorder. And we know why. Because, you know, we know why. Muhammad had an STD, guys. He suffered from all kinds of illnesses. He, when he had to pee, number one, he had to sit down like a girl. Even his seed was bad. Right? This is why he needed a nice dish of kebab to fix his... Uh, yeah. You know? Because Muhammad suffered, suffered from uh, STD illness. Right? He used to fall down on the ground. With foam on his mouth, right? And those are things that you get when you have an STD. If you do some research, you will see that Muhammad had actually an STD because he used to, to sleep around with women, many sex slaves. Yeah, he had an STD, man. Sorry if my English guys bear with me, you know. English is not my mother tongue, but you got the idea. He had an STD, he had a lot of issues in the brains. Have you ever seen a prophet, or have you ever heard of a prophet except Muhammad, who used to fall down on the ground with foam on his mouth? Only about Muhammad. It's all over the Seerah and Nabawiya, right? In the early biography of Muhammad. Shaking foam on your mouth there's nothing that, normal people don't do that right yeah and, and as the guy said in the chat uh thomas matthew allah if allah is speaking in the quran if the quran is the speech of allah as muslims say why is allah asking guidance allah is saying please guide us along the straight path so allah is asking for guidance that's weird. Oh Allah, why are you asking for guidance? And when you ask and pray, to who are you asking to be guided? Are you asking to uh, Jibreel? Are you asking Jibreel? Are you asking another God? That doesn't make sense. Anyway guys, I think uh, we had a nice time today. As we showed you, Muslims are nothing but hypocrites. Muhammad was nothing but a hypocrite. We exposed Mimi Hijab. We showed you the, the debate between me and Ali Mirza, the guy who does not have the courage anymore to call me. He got spanked pretty hard. We showed you many Islamic sources and many contradictions and how Muhammad was nothing but a fake prophet, a hypocrite. Please download our videos guys, if you like some parts,
cut them out of the video, download the video, cut it out and upload it on your social media. Because the truth must be told, the truth must go out. And also don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button and also click on the notification bell to receive notifications when we go live or upload videos. Thank you for joining in guys. God bless you. God bless your families. Jesus is Lord. Muhammad is nothing but a fake hypocrite prophet. And I want to ask Muslims to denounce Muhammad and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because the proof is in front of you. We showed you more than enough proof that Muhammad is nothing but a hypocrite and a fake prophet. And Islam is false. Jesus is Lord and Islam is false. Thank you for watching and God bless. See you next time. Bye bye.